Let's pray. Father, give weight to your word that comes only from heaven. Anoint your word to us this morning. We thank you that you died for each one of us so that we would not be left in mystery land or in a field of misunderstanding or misinformation and that we might understand the things of the Spirit and the things to come and the timing of your coming back again. Let none listening to this ministry this morning be bewildered or misinformed from the hour in which we're living or even miss eternity. Multiply your word and speak into the deepest, deepest recesses of each of our hearts this morning. Help us to move closer to the things of God, no matter how bad things get in New Zealand. Move New Zealand closer to your bleeding side as we come up to Easter. Give us the strength and the victory and the power that only comes from the cross. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Before I could begin my ministry, we've got a baby arriving my stepson and his wife are having a baby, Bethanel, in New Guinea. It's going to be a little bit um, tricky on Wednesday. They're going into hospital. So, Father, we just pray for these two. We pray that the uh, doctors will have wisdom and understanding and skill to bring this baby out in a, in a manner that will be absolutely fantastic for the two couple. We ask that your blessing will be by mum and dad, and the child will be good-looking and will be intelligent and live a long life, and above all, will serve you for the rest of your life. God, have your hand upon this child and mother and on Wednesday. In Jesus' name, amen. My name is Ken Noble, preaching from the Word of God from mychurchnz.com. We'll move straight into the Word of God. The blood has never lost its power. Many people's testimonies and lives have been contest, can contest to the fact that the same power that raised Jesus from the dead raised their life and transformed their life. It was the cross that, has, that was spilt, a nail driven into his hands. As we remember Easter beaten, it was a supernatural event at the cross of Calvary, a moment of delivery 2,000 years ago when he died and he wiped out our debt that we should be hanging on that cross, that we owed and we should be there on that cross. For we were born in sin from birth. But when the blood washes us, it washes us clean clean and whole again. The power you have set me free from this and that. The power of your blood that has was shed for me that washes me whiter than snow. The power of addiction, the power that sets my mind free. The power that sets us away from despair and darkness in a dark world. The power that sets our chains of sin free. The power of the blood that can breathe wholeness into each and every one of our lives. The power of the blood that brings forth life and more abundant life to us. The power of the blood that makes you a new creation in Christ Jesus. The power of the blood that gives us victory. The power of the blood that opposes every darkness in our life. The power of the blood that rejects every voice that says you are no good, you are a failure. You made a mess of your life, your whole entire life. You have no hope. The power that says we have got hope in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the power of the blood, the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. And it was all because of this this morning, folks, because of Jesus, our Saviour, that went to the cross. That went to the cross from you and I. The power of the blood says God's on our side. We have the victory. The power and the blood says God will fight our battles because Christ is victorious over all our dark moments and our dark sessions. He has overcome death. We used to sing that song, Would you be free from your burden of sin? There's power in the blood. There's power in the blood. Would you evil victory win? There's power in the blood. The power, the wonder-working power of the blood of the Lamb. And if you're hearing this message for the first time this morning, let me... Let this power wash over you and cleanse you this morning, cover you and transform you because there's power in the blood from this uncon unconditional love that Christ set his life aside and died on that tree because his blood never fails. My message this morning is this. The power of the cross will refloat your axe head. The power of the cross will refloat your axes. If you've got a Bible, would you go to 1 Corinthians 17? The power of the cross will refloat your axe head. For this message, God, for Christ did not, for Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom and eloquence. Let the cross of Christ be emptied of its power. For the message of the cross. It's foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are 
being saved is the power of God, for it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, the intelligent of the intelligent, and I will frustrate them. Where is the wise person in government? The source of truth. Where is the wise person in the New Zealand government? Where is the teacher of the law and the scientists? Where are the modelers? Where is the philosopher, the modeler of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the governments of the world and the New Zealand government and all its cohorts? For since in the wisdom of God, the world through its wisdom did not know him, nor did it know any wisdom, God was pleased through the foolishness of what was preached to save to those who believe. Jews demanded a sign and Greeks looked for wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to the Jews, a stumbling block to the governments, a stumbling block to the schools and the people that have gone away from Christ, a foolishness to the Gentiles, but to those who God has called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of glory, is the one that sets men's hearts free, the God of wisdom, for the foolishness of man is wiser than human wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than the human strength. Folks, I didn't say that. Paul said that from the Scriptures. And brothers and sisters, think of what you were when you were called out, where you were called. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were influential. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose the foolish, the weak things of this world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. And God chose the lowly things of this life and despised things and the things that are not to nullify the things that are so that no one can boast before him. It's because of him that you are in Christ. Jesus, who became one of us, for us, for us wisdom was from God. This is our righteousness, wisdom, holiness, redemption. A people set apart with a new knowledge, a new wisdom, a new strength. Therefore it is written, let no one boast but or glory in another translation. Let no one boast but boast in the Lord. Paul describes the cross, a way of a supernatural life. It makes absolutely no sense to common men. Walking in his own wisdom making up laws every day in Parliament and understanding. He describes this life as an infusion of God, resident and dwelling in man himself, God himself, God coming to man. God would rent that veil in half and separate himself from man and to stop and think that the almighty God would even bother to abandon the earthly temple by human hands and decide to take up residence in those that simply just say yes my hands up I accept the Lord Jesus Christ and he would come down and take up residence in just mere man himself God 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 is resident in us it's not a concept residing in you it's not a thinking of a thought it's not an imagination it is reality God is coming down and coming and dwelling inside his people in the temple of the mankind. Paul says, it's not I that liveth, but Christ that liveth in me. For in him we live and we move, the Bible says. And we have our being. It is in Christ, folks, everything that God has called me to be, I can be. Everything, everywhere he asks me to go, I can go. This is the power, the what, that, what he has spoken in your heart. That dream, that whisper can now become a reality. And the only unbelief can only now stop that whisper from God, the word from God, the rhema from God. Only your unbelief can actually separate this from reality. Paul says he knows how to, be, how to suffer in need. He knows how to be hungry. He knows how to be broke. He knows how to be sick. He knows how to be abased. But now I have found a power that through the life of Christ I am more than a conqueror through Christ that died for me and suffered for me. I have found a new and higher reality in life. Everything that my natural eyes couldn't see, everything that my natural ears couldn't hear, Everything that my natural mind couldn't conceive, 
couldn't comprehend. And I've found a higher reality, a higher wisdom of the life of Christ that resides inside me, inside my own very vessel, the temple of the Holy Spirit, which is in me. So we took out, took out, talk about the cross being foolishness to nat natural man, to those that are trying to find a cleanliness way to wisdom and a way to God and climb up some other ladder to find God other than what God himself has come down to offer. And what he has offered appears and seems to be to many men foolishness, and they walk away from the cross. And through it all, you can see this world as an utter mess, an utter shame, it's an utter confusion, it's an utter turmoil, global warming, we're all going to die next week, according to the latest. The wars in Ukraine, no one can seem to understand that God's wrapping this world up, Everything's moving at such a fast pace now in the world. The way God said exactly what he said would happen is happening right now in our eyes. And yet the people walk away from the cross and take no notice of the wisdom, the higher reality, the higher level of knowledge. But because there's a way that seems right under a man, there's a way that seems right under government, there's a way that seems right under modelers, and God comes down and chops it out with an axe and says, you're all wrong. But we as the people of God, we're not left in a world of not knowing. We are not left in a world of, un of confusion or darkness or misinformation that they're pumping out. We are the children of light and we are the people of knowledge and we are tapped in because God has resided in us. And if we don't believe that this morning, he doesn't give us light. We are miserable, lost, miserable people this morning. The entire Bible is all about the power of the cross. It's a shadow of things to come from Genesis to Revelations. Christ going to the cross and having a bride on the face of the planet that God would dwell amongst his people and return to them again. And he would be their Lord and their God and their guidance and their wisdom. In number 16, there was 250 rebellion men. There's 250 rebellion people in Parliament today, all big noting themselves. A similar story here, big noters, and they said to Moses and Aaron, you're, you're taking too much time. You're taking too much effort on yourself. You want to start shelling out some effort, um, start relegating you know, your responsibilities. After all, we're a holy people. We're walking with God. And these 250 men and their families of note died because of their arrogance and their sin. And God said, I'm going to show you a sign of who is, in, who is called and who's walking in the reality of the life of God and the true relationship with me. So I want every man to take a staff. The staff is a, is a symbol of the cross. One staff for each tribe, representing each tribe, the tribe of Israel. And Aaron's staff is going to represent the tribe of Levi. And the priesthood are there, are those that are called to walk close to God. And I'm going to show you amongst these priesthood clowns who is actually walking close to me. I'm going to show you the show ponies in this, in this acting. I'm going to show you the great actors around here. And something suddenly happened miraculously in the morning. And that rod of Aaron's to the house of Levi, the staff began to blossom. And it brought forth buds and yielded fruit and a new fragrance came through the temple and began, began to seep through the lives of these people in the rod. You know, a lot of people go to church today and they, you could ask them, are you saved? No, oh, yeah, I'm saved. Yeah, I'm good. Do you believe in the Son of God? Yeah, I believe that. Mm. Do you believe that Jesus? Yes, I believe he rose from the dead. Yes. But have you really embraced the power of the cross? If so, there should be a irrefut irrefutable evidence, a fragrance. And if I ask most of you, are you really walking close to God? Most of you would say yes. But I put this challenge out to each one of us this, this morning and even myself. Is there any evidence in your life? Are you a sweet fragrance? Are there any blossoms? Is there any fruit? So if you are, you will have new fruit, you will have new blossoms, you will have a new fragrance, you will have new evidence and mercy by mercy each day. You can say you believe, but if you're not growing in God daily with new mercies by mercies, morning by morning, I see new mercies, the song says. Can you honestly see? I see new mercies in Christ every day through the struggles and through the trials. Or do I leave the church or do I do something else? My life is changing. My family know it. My friends know it. My workmates know it. Everyone knows it. My kids know it. A lot of people are going to church, but that's all they do. 
But when they go back into the world, there's no evidence. There's no new fragrance. There's no new fruit. There's no new life. And if you've come to Christ from which you were once dead in sin, there's an evidence of newness of life. There's people adding to the church. There's people magnetized to your personality. Morning by morning, I see new fruit. Morning by morning, I see the church grow. Morning by morning, I see people being saved. I see new mercies, a new promise for tomorrow. There's no room for stagnation in our situation. We're in the army of God. We're on the move. And we're not stopping. And Ephesians 2 says, seconds, As for you, you were dead in transgression and sins in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and of the rule of the kingdom of the air. The Spirit is now at work in those who are disobedient. You were dead. You are walking like a dead man. And if you're not in Christ, you're actually dead. Dead. You know how to lie. You know how to cheat. You never thought a thing about it before you came to Christ. Paul says, you are now alive, brought into the power of the cross and an endless life in Christ, he says. And all of us lived among them at that one time, gratifying the cravings of the flesh, Paul says, and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature des deserving of wrath. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ. Even when we were dead in transgressions, it is by grace you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. In order in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. What a wonderful verse that really is. Quickened out of death, like Aaron's rod, brought out of death. Bud, fruit, fragrance, given a new life. We see Moses' staff called at 80 years of age to bring three million people out of captivity for many years. And God puts in his hand a staff, all that he needed to do to finish the job off. The staff, the type of the cross, and when you come to the cross in Christ, you enter into the same power that Moses entered into. There's no form of captivity that can no longer hold you. You can walk out of every moment, every situation. You are no longer to be in a cage of sin. You, all you need is the cross. You need the staff in your hand, the word of God, the staff of Christ in your heart. And now you understand what happened at Calvary. You know, many reject the finished work of the cross today. And it's so sad to see them walk away from the power of the cross. It's best symbolized when, you th when he threw it on the ground and it became a serpent. And you can't get any closer to what happened in the Garden of Eden, folks. And God said to Moses, pick that serpent up by the tail. And the only way you can pick a snake up is by the tail. The snake has to be going in the other direction. So what does the Bible say? Resist the devil and he will flee. In other words, it will go in the other direction. The moment you stand up in the power of the cross and you say, no, I do not have to live this way any longer. I do not, I do not belong to the prince of this yet, here any longer. I belong to Christ, the cross, whom I died for me. He has redeemed me. He has called me out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light by the power of the cross. And the moment you face Satan and the, your old life that rears its ugly head and says, no, no, I am a child of the one that died for me. And, and the, through the power of the cross to which you were defeated and you are going to be locked up and chained up and you are going, your end is coming. He will run away, the Bible says, he will flee. And when he grabbed that snake in his hand, it became a staff again. And Moses walked out of the land of Egypt of captivity of three million people and was set free against one of the most powerful armies that the world had ever known. The power of the cross to the people that are not saved, folks. It's, a, it's foolishness, but it's to us. It's the power of God. You don't have to live in bondage in New Zealand any longer. You don't have to live in captivity any longer in New Zealand. You don't have to live in constant fear of COVID-19 any longer, folks. You don't have to live in the torment of the past that rears its ugly head and remembers all the things you did wrong. In Exodus 15, 23, the children of Israel are now heading out of the land of bondage. And when they came to Mara, they could not drink the water because it was so, so bitter. So the people murmured and grumbled and complained against Moses. What shall we drink? And Moses cried out to the Lord and the Lord showed him a tree. He threw it in the water and the water became sweet and fit to drink. 
the tree, the symbolization of the cross of Jesus Christ. There the Lord issued a ruling and instruction and told them to put, them, put it to the test. He said, if you listen carefully to the Lord your God and do what is right in his eyes, and if you pay attention to his commands and keep all his decrees, I will not bring you any of these diseases. I brought you, brought, brought on the Egyptians, the diseases that, that he put on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. Then they came to Elam, where there were 12 springs and 70 palm trees. They camped there near the water. It's almost as though the devil at this particular time had planned on making the people to complain and moan and groan. I'll stop them exactly the same way as I stopped Adam and Eve. I'll make them not content. I can draw them back to the bondage of despair. I can bring them back to the bondage of immorality and drugs and poverty and captivity. I'll get them to complain about the leadership of the church. I'll get them to complain about leadership of everything. I'll get them to complain about God's faithfulness. I'll bring them back to the same plagues. I'll bring them back to COVID-19. I'll bring them back to despair. I'll bring them back to lockdowns in New Zealand. I'll bring them down to the massive amounts of suicides that are happening in New Zealand and no one says a word. I'll bring them back to the marriage breakdowns that are happening over this nonsense that's going on in New Zealand. I'll bring them back to a disease and I can bring it all back on again on God's people in New Zealand and there's certain times in life when we need God so desperately like never before. Oh God, I can't get through this any longer. We've got no solutions to COVID-19 any longer. You have to be my strength. And Christ says to you, you have every right to moan and complain. That's what he says. After all, I had the same happen to me. He said, I had Judas trying to flick me off for 30 pieces of silver. I had Peter standing there telling me, telling me what a great bloke he was and boasting about everything. But in the power of the cross, I thought it not robbery. I went to the cross and won the victory for all. I went to the cross. Of all this Satan wants to infuse into the life of the church, the life of people, to break it down, to denigrate the power of the cross. He's hard at work wanting to infuse this garbage, this fear, these lies in the media daily, minutely, captivity, infliction into the people of God in New Zealand. Folks, we're living in a time everyone's complaining, everyone's not happy. Everyone's blaming someone. Everyone's saying it's this one, that one. Of oh, the mess that's gathering at increasing momentum. The debt in New Zealand is it's unthinkable. In a country where everybody should have a new car, a new house, a new boat and a new batch. It's such a rich country. But no, we've got to this level. Everyone is blaming everyone for the hopelessness of this New Zealand. We ought not to be a people of complaining and fall into the trap of the deep. A people of hope, a people of solution, a people of God. That we are light and salt to a bewildered, unknowledgeable people of God. We should be like that tree that was cast into the open waters, representing the power of the cross, the power of Christ to overcome every obstacle that the devil wants to set upon our friends, our family and people that know not God. Some of the words that have been spoken, each one of you listening to this broadcast this morning, have been wounded. You've come up with some bitter memories of your past, and they keep shaking their heads in your dreams and in your life. And some of you have regretted many bitter words you've addressed people with. Some of you regret a lot of things. We all have. And this rage is up inside us. And this tree that was cast in the water proved that there's victory. And it says this, if you keep my word and do that which is right and keep my commandments, I will put none of these diseases, none of these thoughts. What was the disease? The death of the firstborn, frogs, darkness, evil spirits rolling around them, worshipping other gods, the disease of the heart, the disease of unbelief, the disease of the mind. The disease of pride that would not allow you to bend to the knee of God. But if you listen and do what is right, and none of these diseases, none of them, just as we see in New Zealand, diseased, angry, complaining, and it's a disease. And if you do not right, if you do, do right, 
I will protect you and heal you and your land and put none of these diseases upon you. As you see this society unraveling, sinking, complaining, blaming, God says, I am the Lord that heals you of all of these diseases. So lastly, in finishing, I want to bring you to the story of Elisha, a son of the prophets building a house to live in, like people are building houses in New Zealand everywhere. And whilst they were building this house, an axe head fell off the end of the axe and it fell into the water next door. In 2 Kings 6, chapter 4, he went and he went with them, then went to Jordan and began to cut down trees. And as one of them was cutting down a tree, the iron axe fell into the water. Oh, no, my Lord, he cried out. I just borrowed that axe. I've got to get that axe head back again. It doesn't belong to me. The man of God asked, where did it fall? Where did it go? And when he showed him the place, Elisha cut a stick again. Again, a top of the a type of the tree, the stick, a tree. He came down the tree and threw it in and made the iron float, lifted it out and said, then the man reached out his hand and took the axe head. Folks, the story of the access is a story of the cross of Christ. What is impossible becomes possible to Christ. What people said you will never be, you will be. It's a story that when people says you have no strength, you will have strength in God. You will, be, you will have the strength of the power of the cross. It's a story that will be a blessing to many people in this society. It shows us that God cares about the little things. It cares about our grandchildren. It cares about our children. It cares about our husbands and wives. It cares about our jobs. He's concerned about our future. He's concerned about your future. That's why, he's, why he says, be not concerned. God says, it's my concern. Not even sparrows drop to the ground and he doesn't know about it. It speaks about a supernatural regathering of what was lost. And I'm going to give back what sin stole from your life. We know we've all had stolen years because of sin. And I'm going to give you back the peace that was gone. I'm going to stop you worrying because I'm worrying for you. I'm going to give you back the lost hope. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the hope. I'm going to give you back a purpose in a life. You are a new creation in Christ Jesus, a new person. You lost heart. I'm going to create a new heart. I'm going to give you a new heart. The Lord says, I'm going to give you back that axe head. And you're going to live in a manner that will glorify and magnify and you're going to shout glory to the Lord and magnify his name. The axe head was borrowed and it was lost. And many of us have been borrowed. We are borrowed when we're living on the face of the earth. God has given us life and we've wasted it. We've wasted these years. And I know many people listening. I've lost my life. I've lost my honesty. I've lost my integrity. I've lost my future. I've lost my character. I've lost my faith in God because I was careless with my axe head. I swung at keels everywhere, thinking there was a million tomorrows. And suddenly I found out that I'm nowhere. I haven't gone anywhere. And suddenly it all sunk into a place where I can no longer find it. Seemingly I cannot longer gather it. It seems I cannot find it. I can't find it in any religion. I've been to every religion. I've been to every soothsayer. I can't find it. Please help me find it. So he cast the stick in the axe head, then flowed, and I'm the Lord that heals you, and I'm the Lord that will restore you this morning. And it comes a point that we must believe that your axe head will float again. The power of the cross, the tree that was flicked, the cross came back, gave us back everything that we lost, and was regained at Calvary's tree. We're no longer a captive. We're no longer subject to this element of this world. God belongs to us and we belong to God. We have a hope and a future. We must believe this. The cross of Jesus gave us back everything. Gave us back our life. Gave us back our access. So what's my part in this, you might ask me this morning. In verse 7 it says, lift it out. He said, then the man reached out his hand and took it. That's all you need to do, folks, this morning, is put your hand in the hand of the man of Galilee. He reached out. He could have stared in unbelief and said, I don't believe it. He could have said, I'll walk away from this, or decide to put his hand in and take it by faith. That's how you appropriate the power of the cross. It's yours. There's no second thoughts. There's no second arguments. There's no discussion. Nothing to talk about. God, you're giving me a new mind. You're giving me new provisions. You're giving me new hope. You're giving me new fruit. You're giving me new giftings. You're giving me new redemption. Strength of the day. I'll take it. Promising me a new life. 
to take the serpents by the tail. You promised me your way out of sin and this darkness. I'd be a fool not to take it. I'd be a fool to hold my hand back to myself. Oh Jesus, I simply put my hand in your hand by faith this morning. By faith, by sin and death dealt with. By faith, my weakness becomes my strength. God, by faith, I put my hand out and I just simply take it. This is all yours. When you choose to do right, you will, I will put none of these diseases in you. It is foolishness to the natural mind, but to the man that reaches his hand out and takes it. This is the power of the cross. Let's pray. Father, as we close off this me message this morning, we ask that our axe heads will float again and we'll see the people that you intended us to be, a people that walk in victory and walk, walk in newness of life, that we will have that sweet fragrance and we'll have fruit, that we will do that which is right. And we will incline our ears so that none of these diseases will be our portion through the power of the cross. So as we depart this, this morning, bless each one listening to this ministry, broadcasting around the world. Bless each one and bring us back again next week to another wonderful word from your gospel. Amen.